Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect. It is a new day and another shot at the title. Today, we are taking a look at C.D. Lamb and the extra motivation that he took from being present at the Hall of Fame weekend for the NFL. No, he did not actually play in the Pro Football Hall of Fame game itself, but he was present to see all of the festivities and... Cowboy greats, Cliff Harris, Jimmy Johnson, and um, Drew Pearson, obviously, the man for which he is numbered, the original 88, inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So that's good. That's good that he drew from that. And as you can see from the caption beneath him there, in speaking about that and that motivation he draws from it, he essentially is saying, until I get my own Hall of Fame jacket, I'm working. He's motivated by the entire experience. Here's the full quote here. Um, quote, I was smiling, being there just thinking and kind of fantasizing, if you will, of what if. All it takes is work. I approach every day like it's my last because you never know when it is. Until I get one of them gold jackets, I'm working. That's exactly the right mentality for any player to have. You should want to go in and aspire to greatness. And obviously, with regard to wide receivers, it's not uncommon to see these guys come up with a lot of hype and momentum around them and immediately issue proclamations of greatness, talking about how they're going to join the immortals in the Hall of Fame and how they're going to be one of the greatest to ever play. That happens a lot. Wide receivers kind of have that, that uh, I, don't, I don't think prima donna is the right phrase to it, and I don't think that's what CD is. But they have that mentality, that bravado about themselves. They're kind of their own hype man, if you will, in a lot of cases. But a lot of times it doesn't actually pan out. It doesn't actually develop. Whether they start hot and you know kind of tail off, as we've admittedly seen with Odell Beckham Jr., or they simply are okay, not great. It happens. Every single year it happens. But C.D. Lamb did turn some heads last year when he brought in 74 catches for a Cowboys rookie record, 935 receiving yards. Keep in mind, he had Dak Prescott less than five full games. Had he had Dak Prescott, he would have recorded, surely would have recorded over 1,000 receiving yards. Instead, he was receiving passes from Garrett Gilbert, Cooper Rush, and Ben freaking Nucci. Yeah and yet he nearly broke the century mark. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Century mark. Would that be 100? Phrases. Words, right? Anyway, so C.D. Lamb had a very impressive rookie season. If you look at the NFL records for most rookie receiving yards, he's not in the top 25, but he would have been close had he had Dak, if he had broken 1,000 yards, you look at this and you see that, for instance, 13th on that list all time was now teammate Amari Cooper, who as a rookie with the Raiders put forth 1,070 receiving yards. You see just over 100 yards back. Not far at all. And that's a guy that's midway, about halfway up that list. That's pretty good. There's reason to see how, in terms of a fast start, CD has the opportunity. Playing with this offense, playing with the talent he's surrounded by, a perennial Pro Bowl quarterback, a star-studded wide receiver tandem with Michael Gallup's not going to make a Pro Bowl or anything like that, but he's another guy with the capability of going for 1,000 yards just because of especially the deep threat counter he offers to CD and Amari Cooper, both of whom can play kind of wherever. CD's just as good inside as he is outside. And for that reason, you can really move any of these guys around and get big, big production out of them. And then, of course, you have Ezekiel Elliott offering a balance to the passing game as well. Now, Dak Prescott might have said recently that he doesn't want to throw for 6,000 yards in this season because if he's doing that, it means there's not the necessary balance to the team. He wants to run the ball better. And I think that's a very good mentality, especially for a guy who is currently dealing with a shoulder strain for his throwing shoulder and is getting another MRI after this next preseason game. Interesting. But we'll get to that another time. So CD, he plays in the perfect offense, 
and you want to talk about bright spotlights that could ultimately give you the exposure and hype you need to get into the Hall of Fame, there is no brighter light than being a star player on America's team. There's just not. CD's going to get all of the attention and exposure he could possibly want. And I think as well, whether you want to say, hey, he's a number two receiver or borderline number one in if Amari Cooper, whose production does still back up that he should be the number one receiver in Dallas, fine. But Amari is so soft-spoken, it doesn't really matter. CD kind of gets that attention. Even though he's not a look-at-me, look-at-me kind of guy, he still can make the plays, put forth the production, and the fact that the number one receiver is so soft-spoken allows him to stand out. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So yes, CD is going to have tremendous opportunity to make an impact in Dallas that could take him there. Now, I'm not trying to, to quote Bill Parcells. I'm not trying to, or it's rather not quoting him, but rather paraphrasing. I'm putting away the anointing oil, right? This is a sophomore wide receiver. And as I said, receivers come into the league all the time with hype and momentum, making grand proclamations. And CD didn't say, hey, I'm going to be there. He said, I'm going to work until I'm there. A little more blue collar, a little more down to earth, I would say. But even still, you have to take into consideration the, the balance around him. He is the most promising wide receiver draft pick for the Cowboys since Des Bryant in 2010. And while Bryant and Lamb both possess home run threat ability, I think CD is a more complete wide receiver. Des, you know, obviously Des's ability to high point the ball and to use his size to his advantage was almost second to none, other than Calvin Johnson, obviously, was about as good as it got. But Des was not a polished route runner, which CD is pretty much surgical in that regard. Only guy ahead of him on the team, for sure, would be Amari Cooper. So that's a fantastic tandem to have at wide receiver. But CD's ability to play inside or outside is something Des didn't have as well either. So he's more, he's more versatile. He can run all kinds of different routes. Des was famously known for like three or four route types. And part of that is those are what he did best. So that's all the coaching staff ever really asked him to do. So he didn't get a chance to develop or grow those other aspects of his game. And then once injuries and a little bit of mileage on the tires took away what was so elite for him, where it kind of regressed a little bit, suddenly it stopped being head and shoulders above everybody. And it was kind of eye to eye with most everybody. And that's when Des took the step back from otherworldly all pro to good, but not not the guy that he once was. And then that's when it became harder to kind of justify the contract, and we know how that went. I think CD's ability with these other elements he brings to the table, the route running, uh, the elusiveness and agility, the footwork, I think all of that is so strong that it's going to give him more lasting power than Dez, who, like I said, was relatively short. I mean, Dez was less than 10 years in Dallas, and uh, comeback fell apart with the Saints because of an Achilles. And then he had a brief return with the Ravens that kind of underwhelmed. The biggest thing from that was him not getting to play against Dallas because of a pregame positive test for COVID-19. And then after the game was retested and it came back negative, make of that, you know, what, what you will. And that, that was disappointing, obviously. But... Other than that, you don't really hear a whole lot on that front. And kudos to Dez for all the, not just work he did in the past with the Cowboys, but the effort and everything he's gone through to get back. It's, it's awesome. It really is. I wish nothing but the best for him. But I think CD has a higher ceiling than Dez Bryant. I think Dez is the more talented receiver, which I, I kind of um, think of synonymously with uh, athleticism. But I think CD brings a more complete package and will be the better receiver when all is said and done. If CD doesn't suffer any kind of injuries, I think you're looking at a perennial Pro Bowl talent and the kind of guy who will be your number one receiver for a decade. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. So we can't put the cart in front of the horse, but we can tell you as far as, as, far as promising prospects go, 
CD Lamb has the right talent, ability, and as this quote shows, mindset and motivation to reach the absolute pinnacle of pretty much the career of any professional football player. I mean, you, you might say like, oh, well, a championship. But we're talking individually. If you have a guy coming in this talented, it's one thing if you got Mr. Lunchpail coming in talking about how he wants to be a Hall of Famer. It's another when you got someone that you look at it and you say, yeah, you know, given what we've seen from you, even dating back to your time at Oklahoma and who you play for, what exposure you're going to have, yeah, I think we can reasonably foresee you being a Hall of Fame talent potentially. And then you add in the down-to-earth mindset and work ethic. Whoo! Sky's the limit for C.D. Lamb. But we'll see how it plays out. Regardless, I feel really good. I still, to this day, cannot believe the rest of the league let him fall to number 17 right into the laps of the Dallas Cowboys. And even more satisfying was the fact that the Eagles were salivating over the opportunity to steal him away. Now, the Eagles tried to do this same thing a couple years earlier with uh, Dallas Goder. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a great tight end. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the same. It wasn't that the Cowboys were tripping over themselves like, we got to go get him. It was like, oh, that'd be nice. No, no, no. The Eagles were dying to get C.D. Lamb. And then he fell into Dallas's lap. And Dallas, who wasn't even necessarily looking at a wide receiver, finally got their heads out of their ass after years of not taking the best talent available, but rather saying, what's our greatest need? Oh, no, we don't want T.J. Watt. We want Taco Charlton. No, you don't. No, you don't. Nobody wants Taco Charlton. Cowboys got their head out of their ass, said, hey, uh, let's not make this too complicated. Who's the best player available? Oh, dude, we have this guy as like a top five talent on our boards. Yup. Yoink. You're a Dallas Cowboy. Hell yeah. That's how it should work. That's how it should work. It doesn't matter that you just re-signed Amari Cooper to a new max contract, a five-year, $100 million contract. What matters is putting the most talent available together on your roster. The fact that you have Amari that you have Michael Gallup, and that you have CeeDee Lamb gives you a three-headed monster nobody, nobody in the NFL can contend with. You have three guys capable of going for a 1,000 receiving yards. Three guys capable of giving you 10-plus touchdowns in a season. Does that mean they all will necessarily? No. Realistically, only one of them might do that. Maybe two, but you're not going to get 10 out of Gallup, I wouldn't think. I think you'd probably get like five or six out of Gallup. But regardless... You have guys with that potential. That is a three-headed monster. That is King Ghidorah running out there, uh, lining up for you outside the numbers and in the slot. And the fact that you can move any of them around, you can create mismatches everywhere. You want to make life easier for Dak Prescott? You already have the running back for him. You've put pretty good investments in the offensive line. Now give him some weapons. Give him something to throw to. That's how you maximize everything. And it's so much better because no disrespect to the other Cowboy receivers, I think the Cowboys top to bottom have a very competent receiving core. But if you're having to throw Cedric Wilson out there or Noah Brown out there instead of C.D. Lamb, like theoretically if you hadn't picked up C.D. Lamb, you don't feel as good about your receiving core. You think like, yeah, we have a pretty good receiving core. Obviously, Amari Cooper is very good. And if healthy, he is damn good. Uh, Michael Gallup, game-breaking ability. He's had good steps forward in recent years. But, you know, he's not, not going to be a Pro Bowl type receiver. And then you have a drop down to a Wilson or a Brown. And you kind of feel differently about it. You kind of think like, yeah, it's all right. But you give me CeeDee Lamb with those first two guys, holy cow. Nobody, no corner, no combination of cornerbacks in the league can guard that trio if they're healthy. And that is, that's the kind of thing that allows CeeDee, because of the matchup nightmares, you can't put two guys on him. You can't bracket him because Amari Cooper's going to draw, draw that coverage. 
and the fact that they got to put a safety deep to make sure that they're contending with Gallup's deep ball threat and speed, CeeDee Lamb's going to have nothing but optimal coverage. He's going to have not even the best, uh, best cornerback on him most of the time, and he's going to get single coverage a lot. Or he's going to be able to find the soft spot of the zone, which he's so good at doing, sit down and get an easy target, get an easy completion, and then he has the, open, the ability in the open field to turn a small gain into a huge gain. He is in the perfect environment with the perfect weapons around him to let him fully maximize his strengths. And if you can do that over an extended period of years, or if you can even, even if it's not a super long period of years, but you're able to reach that pinnacle as a team with one or more Super Bowl titles, you have an ability to quickly put together a Hall of Fame resume. That's, that is special. And you got the right mindset going in, and that is maybe inevitable.